The world needs cinema now more than ever. It may be the last important form of resistance to the deteriorating world in which we live. Theo Angelopoulos In this video from Channel Unique Perspective, we want to talk about Theo Angelopoulos, a great Greek director. We are interested in learning more about his symbolic elements, worldview, philosophical outlook, and cinematic universe. Theo Anglopoulos is the most well-known Greek director, and he makes slow, introspective movies with a strong artistic and philosophical viewpoint. His works occasionally have more than four-hour running times and contain lengthy scenes that can last up to 10 minutes. People who don't like serious movies might not go see this great director's movies because of this. However, that's not the best decision to make. Perhaps they are oblivious of the magic in Anglopoulos' films. You will become addicted to his works once you get acquainted to his style. Theo Anglopoulos' artwork resembles a lovely painting in every frame. His films depict the dark, cold, damp, and, of course, rainy landscapes of northern Greece, and the narration s also displayed in extremely long shots, often 360 degrees. Gabriel Garca Marquez's great book 100 Years of Solitude came out in 1967. At the same time, Angelopoulos was slowly making his own movie world. But it's odd that these two people's minds turned out to be the same. One was in Colombia and the other was in Greece. One made these movies and the other wrote stories. But they were both close. Angelopoulos, like Marquez, liked to put places and people in the same narration. However, Theo Anglopoulos is not the only person who merits praise for his work. His collaborations with Tonino Guerra, a screenwriter, Eleni Carindro, who created the magical soundtrack for his movies, and Georgios Arvanitis, a master of long shots and cinematographer, all contributed to the longevity of his works. Anglopoulos's films explore a wide range of topics, from national borders and migration to the impacts of social disintegration on rural Greece after World War II to civil war and political upheaval in the Balkans. His films explore the realities of the middle class and the nation's inability to reconcile society's past and present. His film stories are frequently about the adventures of people who find themselves strangers in their own country. As a result, his films center on a central character and are grounded in historical and contemporary events, as well as mythological and political drama. As is the case in the works of Lucino Visconti, Italian filmmaker, Carlos Sara, Spanish film director, and Andre Vida, Polish film director, history plays a significant role in the lives of the main character in the films of Theo Angelopoulos. In order to emphasize the power and significance of nature, he frequently frames frail humans against huge vistas. 
Also, just like in the films of the famous Italian director Michelangelo Antonioni, landscapes play an important role in Angelopoulos's films. Often, they are more than just a representation of a natural landscape, they become a symbol. One of the most significant differences between European cinema and the well-known Hollywood or commercial cinema is that each deals with events in a different way. In fact, the interpretability of events and the order in which they occur are among the most important distinguishing factors between cinema as art and cinema as entertainment. In Hollywood, we are constantly confronted with various events that move the story from one level to another. In European cinema, there are usually only one or two main events, and what remains is an artistic interpretation that the filmmaker uses as the foundation of his work. This was the central theme and soul of Angelo Plo's cinema. He was more interested in drawing meaning out of the limited events he depicted in his films. When it comes to movies, certain Russian semioticians like Yuri Tinyanov treat each shot of movie like a stanza in a poetry. Although this form of linguistics in cinema was later rejected, the language of Angelopoulos cinema can be examined using the same theory. Angelopoulos will be remembered for his very long take, which carries with it echoes of literature and architecture. Αυτή η γυναίκα που αγκαλιάζει γεια μου είναι η γυναίκα μου. Δεν τροπιάσατε. Δεν έχω πια τιμή και υπόλοιψη. Όλοι με λυπούνται. Ξέρω ότι είστε εδώ! Που να σας πάρω μια όλος. Travel was another common theme in the films of this late director. People who face the change of situation consciously or unconsciously. Sometimes they decide to go on a journey not because they want to but because of the pressures of social life. Sometimes they end up just going. They go on a journey, but there is no guarantee that where they end up will be a better place to live. This Angelopoulos approach never resulted in depressing or dark cinema. By the way, he praised nature and the immortality of the image, and while his works lacked the dramatic action of Hollywood cinema, the conflict of man with the nature became an important dramatic point in his movies. Peripodes Me Too Forminx, 1965, was Theodoros Angelopoulos' first movie. Voyage to Cythera, 1984, Landscape in the Mist, 1988, The Suspended Step of the Stork, 1991, and Eternity and a Day, 1998, are some of his most important films. He made about 20 movies over the course of his career. He wrote 16 screenplays and acted in 8 movies. 
He won many awards, including seven awards from the Cannes Film Festival, which he won in different categories and in different years. Even though most of Angelopoulos's stories take place in Greece, he never shows people in a specific place. Instead, he tries to create a space where these P.O. can be cosmopolitan. People who belong everywhere but have no place. 